Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna have another garage update video. We're gonna be installing the Saferax tire storage system, two of them on my walls back here. So stay tuned. So I've got these safe rack for like 70 or $80. They were about twice as much as the cheap Amazon ones. And I was reading all the reviews and these happen to be more expensive, but they were much more sturdy from the reviews and everything. They are from a company that's veteran owned, except I was expecting it to be made in the USA, but these are still made in China. But yeah, after reading the reviews of those other $40 ones from Amazon, I decided to go with these. They ship from a company called uh, Eagle Industrial Group out of California. They're marketed as safe racks. So one of the things when I was reading the reviews on these, this thing actually comes with all the hardware including all your lag bolts and everything. That's the one thing that you don't get with those $40 Amazon ones. You have to go get your own hardware and you gotta make sure you get the hardware that's gonna actually work because you gotta remember these are holding 400 pounds. You don't wanna go cheap and it ends up breaking on you. That's probably the biggest complaint out of some of those other brands that people don't know what they're doing and they screw these into their beams and then they end up breaking it inside the actual beam or the stud that they're gonna use. We're gonna be putting these onto a concrete block wall. I already got the anchors for them. So we'll go ahead and drill the holes for those anchors and get this baby in. So the first thing you'll notice with these is they're adjustable as far as width go. They go up to 48 inches, I believe. Safely 48 inches, but they, as you can see, they slide right back out. So you wanna make sure you don't wanna exceed the maximum that they list in their instructions. But they're nice, solid steel beams, not anything that's gonna break on you. And you got two of those. And then these guys are nice and solid stamped steel right here, powder coated black. And then they mount to the wall with six holes right here. So you make sure you have a nice safe mount to the wall. I did read some reviews. If you're gonna do this to drywall, they recommend that you figure out where all your beams are. And then the thickness of the drywall, which is usually like five eighths inch or half inch, you wanna kind of take a hole saw, make that hole bigger and put washers between the beam and here so that way the pressure that you end up putting on the lag bolt to the thing is on some washers and not on your drywall because eventually your drywall is going to crush due to the weight of this thing. So one of the things I just realized when I was reading the instructions is you're only supposed to mount these into wood studs. We don't have wood studs over here on the CMU wall so I did a little bit of research and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be mounting them using these anchors right here into the concrete block. One of the things that I saw that people mentioned is to make sure that you try to drill into the webbing of the concrete block, which is basically the edges or the center. That way this thing gets in there and expands in the actual CMU itself and not the void because look how thick it is. It's gonna go inside, it's gonna expand inside the void, which really doesn't do anything and it can pull out eventually if the cinder block ever deteriorated. So we're gonna try to drill right into the web here on the width that we wanna make this. So I've got these 5 8 heavy duty ones. I'm gonna use these on the top bolt. And then I'm gonna use the 5 16 one, which is a little bit smaller on the other two lower ones because those won't be as stressed as the very top one. And then I'm gonna use the lag bolts I bought already at Lowe's because these are shorter. I don't wanna use these extra long ones because then I'm gonna have to drill an extra deep hole, which I don't wanna do. And these are perfectly sized for this once I put the washer on. So we'll go ahead and just drill these in. I've got my 5 8 drill bit, and then I've got this other 3 8 drill bit, but I need a half inch. So I'm just gonna use that first and then take a regular half inch and open it up a little bit to fit the smaller guys.
All right, so we got this side mounted for now. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this side, but this thing went in pretty well. I was off by like maybe an eighth of an inch on the middle screws, so I had to re re-drill those holes a little bit bigger just to get it in and then tighten it down slowly. So I went the top and then the middle, and I just kind of alternated back and forth. That way I wouldn't heat up the head and accidentally snap the head or something. So you just make sure you do that. Even into a wood stud, you wanna go slowly. That way you don't accidentally overheat those heads and break them. So this side's nice and secure. This side, I was able to basically get it the same distance I did as over here, but as you can see, this thing went all the way through on all three holes, even down here in the bottom block. Obviously over here, you know it's hollow. I'm not sure if they actually fill these corners right here for added strength when they build this with concrete all the way through. I'm not a mason, so I'm not sure how that works, but I know for sure this side, we were close to the edge and we still went through all the way. To actually really hit the webbing, you would actually go right here down the center, but then you would have to go through that mortar, and I didn't want to go through that mortar because that'd be a weak point. So we'll go ahead and bolt this together with the anchors, and this side should hold those anchors. Once they go in there, they kind of expand, and they're not going anywhere unless there's an earthquake here in Florida. <laughs> So we got this baby mounted now. I did my test pull-ups on it and everything worked fine. It held my weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheels on here. Hopefully it supports all four of my 18 inch wheels and nothing falls off. Those anchors on top, uh, they did go in there and the, when I tightened them down, they went flush with the bar and hopefully with the way they expand out, they hold inside that cinder block. And I'll keep on checking on it periodically to make sure that nothing's going on with those anchors up top. With three of them, I figure we should be good. Just the way this design is, the weight gets distributed pretty nicely across this whole bar, so it should hold pretty well. So we'll see how that goes. So I've got my stock 2IS wheels here from my 2007 IS. I've had these things since they were brand new. They still have their original tires on here. I bet you most of you guys that are watching this don't even know the original tire that came with this, which is the Potenza RE050s. These were probably like the worst tires as far as wear goes. Everybody that had them back then brand new would only last maybe 12 to 15,000 miles. I still have the original tires from back then all dry rotted. They're probably not even good anymore. If I ever had to use these again, I would have to get all brand new tires if I ever want to drive them on the highway and trust them. But overall, the treads and everything still look kind of good. We got plenty of tread on these, really no major visible damage, but obviously they're 15 years old. So they're probably not good to be used anymore on the road considering their age. And here's a set of 19 inch GS350 F Sport wheels that I picked up last year. I picked these up as a spare for my IS300 Sport Cross in case I ever have to rebuild those SSRs or if I felt like riding around with these to clear my big brakes. I haven't gotten tires for these yet, but these are all nice and cleaned up. Really no damage to them. They're probably like an eight out of 10. If you haven't seen the video of me cleaning up and ceramic coating this, check out the link up here in the corner right now. But these are some nice wheels. They look like ISF wheels, but they're not. They're pretty heavy, but they're nice looking wheels. And if I ever needed them as a spare or just a set to ride around and they're good to do that.
Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you guys are up to doing this project yourself at home, check out the links down in the description. I'll link you to these racks that I bought on Amazon. And I'll also link to some of the other ones when I was researching these same racks. They're like half the price and they probably can do the job too if you install them correctly. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and remember, on any of these projects, whether it's in the house, in the garage, or on the cars, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. That's why I make these videos to kind of guide you guys through these projects and give you a little bit more confidence in attempting it yourself. If you haven't subscribed to your channel already, go ahead and subscribe to stay on top of all my DIY videos, whether it's on the house, on the car, or in the garage. And I want to thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of this video, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.